here we are. It's a long journey, but we are in Texas at the up and coming Starfront Observatories. The sun has just set and the roofs have rolled off and I cannot believe how many astrophotography systems are in here. Let me tell you see this. So if you're one of the many lucky people who already have a system set up here, uh, you may recognize your scope in there somewhere. I'm gonna set up outside of the observatories and just enjoy these Bortle One skies for now. Ray Falls runs Starfront, and he and a small team handle all of the deliveries, setup, and maintenance of the telescopes there. There's always a new system going in at a rate of about four telescopes per day. I've been following Bray as an astrophotographer for years, and it was nice to finally see firsthand what he's been up to for the last five months. Is there an actual correct spot? It's a bit ironic for me to be visiting a remote observatory. I've always considered myself to be a backyard astrophotographer doing the best from home. In the past, I've been pretty anti-observatory as to me, it feels like there's something missing. As someone who enjoys being outside and setting up my own gear, it would feel strange to just log into my gear thousands of miles away. However, not everyone has a backyard or a place to set up. And for those folks, I think it makes sense. And if you're gonna ship your telescope out to live somewhere, it might as well be under Bortle One skies with over 200 clear nights a year. I still think it's cheaper. How much does it cost to have a set up here? Like for, for most of the rigs we're looking at here, how much are they paying monthly? 199 for the majority of the scopes in here. Uh, this is the light tier, so it's up to 48 inch diameter. And the smaller ones, all these little guys, they're 149. Those are the minis. Uh, the biggest that fits is probably the Apertura 71. It's so like AM3, AM5, and then like any kind of small red cat or small refractor fits pretty easily. Although we do also have a whole CEM40 that fits in a mini, it's surprisingly. It's limits, eh? Yeah, it's certainly pushing the far limit, especially in the north-south axis. With all of these scopes here, I have an idea of what's the most popular set up in, in all categories. I think the AM5 for the mounts, right? That's yeah, the AM5 and then like a ASCAR FRA 400 or 500 and then like a ZWO 2600 mm. We have like 40 of that same setup here. Yeah, and they do really well. Like those scopes are great and they run like night after night without issue. So that yeah. Makes your life easier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like when I unbox and I see one of those setups. But yeah, ASCAR scopes are one of the most popular out here, for sure. A lot of the rigs have this little setup here with a planetary camera and a fisheye lens. So they can not only you know keep an eye on their setup, but see the skies as well. And they can see me if they happen to be looking at it right now. Jonathan. Oh, there you go. So he actually doesn't have an AM5. Wow. So he got the Ioptron and the FRA. Oh, Nico, I'm gonna do you a favor, buddy. There's some cobwebs in here. Get you sorted out. While the point of this trip was to visit Starfront, I couldn't go home empty handed. I brought my little travel rig to take some wide field deep sky shots with my Rokinon 135 millimeter lens from this incredibly dark sky location. With that Milky Way core still out after sunset, I couldn't resist capturing some of the dense star fields surrounding the constellation Sagittarius.
one of our newer builds. Uh, it's building number five in the chain of, of each of our five collective observatories. And this one hosts a lot of our small telescopes, which at Starfront is the majority of the scopes here is they're all small, kind of like amateur systems that you really don't see too often in other remote observatories where it's geared towards more of the, the big plane wave dudes. And that's, this is kind of like also how we're able to make it more affordable is because we pack everything way more densely because the scopes are smaller. We're not affording people, you know, these like four foot spaces that you would normally get at an observatory. It's as close as it can physically be with a couple inches left for leeway. Amateur gear is so good nowadays that they operate well enough that they don't need much maintenance and they just work well. People spend so much on their telescopes, even these more amateur ones, that it's wrong to keep them in a place where they wouldn't get used a bunch. I wanted to get more of the telescopes like out of people's closets to where they could actually enjoy in their astro. Maybe they have an apartment, maybe they you know, aren't able to drive out somewhere dark and they just never use it. This is an option where they can actually use their stuff now. What I enjoyed most about this trip was seeing the camaraderie between Bray and the other technicians and how they remember the names of the people behind each telescope. These guys work long days into the night, making sure everyone's rig is running smoothly and new systems are ready for action. It does feel like I almost have a more personal connection with the scope than the person, but that's not a bad thing because we, we love the scopes. <laughs> the scopes don't talk to us too much unless there's a flat panel going, but with the community signs on it, it doesn't feel so lonely anymore. So it does start to feel like a star party. So I guess at this point, you're probably wondering if I'll be sending a rig down to Starfront. I mean, a Bortle 1 with six clear nights a week certainly beats a Bortle 6 with constant clouds, right? I think I'm good, actually. Bunch of cheaters. 